Stan Thompson, trumpet player from Atlanta, went to Curtis, and you're the founder of Play on Philly. When we have a week like we've had in the country, in the world, um, what's on your mind and how are you responding to it? I mean, I think, you know, being a native of Atlanta, um, the the story of the civil rights movement, I think many could argue perhaps Atlanta is the home of that. Um, I've been around a lot of the stories and issues myself. The thing that really got me more than even the George Floyd um, incident was really everything that happened with uh, Ahmaud Arbery, um, the, the young man in Georgia who was uh, gunned down while he was jogging. Mm -hmm. um, and then that was hidden and covered up for several weeks, if not a couple of months, before a video emerged. Um, and then it felt like within 24 hours, the video of uh, George Floyd, you know, what happened to Christian Cooper in Central Park, um, those videos emerged. And I know quickly, I mean, I remember talking with my father and he just reminded me, and I've heard him say this so many times, that when he grew up, um, uh, in Jackson, Mississippi in the early 40s, the same things were going on. It's just today, people have devices and can record them. And with the click of the button, it could be shared to millions of people instantly. Um, uh, so, you know, I mean, overall, I mean, when, when this happened, uh, you know, the George Floyd incident in Minneapolis, um, I, I felt I was already down and out. And then this video emerged um, and then everything that uh, transpired since then. Um, and I think the hardest thing was just seeing the police officer and the look on his face. Um, and it, to me, it just, it looked like he was enjoying himself. Um, and it, it brought back lots of, of stories and a lot of things that I've learned from history of, even those that would sit around with, uh, with a picnic lunch and watch uh, black people uh, be lynched. Um, so it, it really felt um, like, you know, this is just a huge stain, you know, in our society and a huge sin in a way uh, that um, I hope that what is going on today can help us continue to heal and get better, um, especially as you know, justice is sought for George Floyd. Um, and you know, this is pain of the African American community here that has been here ever since we arrived on this continent 400 years ago. Right. Do you think there's something, I mean, I think the fact that, that people are actually talking about, talking about it, it seems perhaps in a different way. Is it, is it different now? Uh, I, I believe so. And the main thing that I think is different is quite frankly, uh, to, to finally have real dialogue with my white colleagues, um, where we never really talked about it. Uh, sure, we used our hashtags, um, but I believe, I mean, I've, I've received so many phone calls and emails uh, from friends that, you know, really want to play their part. And at the end of the day, um, this is something that not only the entire country needs to deal with, but even more specific, you know, white America needs to deal with. Um, and what feels different is that there seems to be a renewed interest and commitment to making that happen. Um, and I think that's one of the best things that we can do to honor the legacy of so many people that have lost their lives um, due to racism and, and injustice. Right. Do you think the music community has any particular role to play? Oh, yeah. Um, music and the arts have 
so important uh, to any struggle mankind has ever had. Uh, it was important in the days where we were hanging out in caves. Um, it's been important in terms of worship. Um, it's been important in terms of uh, going back to the Negro spirituals, um, the slave songs in the fields. Um, so, I mean, music has been a huge part of it and uh, we have an opportunity now. Um, and it's an opportunity to hear voices um, that even I believe the music community has inadvertently silenced. And for example, by not having more uh, black composers specifically for this conversation, but not to have more black composers highlighted um, on a regular basis um, and as part of uh, the canon that I think we all can enjoy. Uh, that's been a huge missed opportunity. And uh, perhaps we would have heard about the pain and the suffering, and it would not have to explode in the way that it has in the past week or so. Right. Do you feel that there's less a community or um, it's your experience as a classical musician is different? from your experience if you would be in the midst of a jazz community? Sure, yeah, I mean, I will, I will say, I mean, I have not participated in the jazz community in Philly nearly as much as the classical community. Um, certainly jazz has been a big part of my DNA uh, growing up. Um, it's really what brought me to music in the first place. Um, and so I, I think it'll be difficult to say that, you know, the, the jazz community is better off because the jazz community has its own issues. Um, and a good number of those issues are very similar. Um, and I think the issues that are similar are still rooted in the same problems. Um, just a lack of resources for musicians, uh, jazz musicians, especially jazz musicians of color um, in this town. And when you compare that to the opportunities and the funding um, and the resources that are put into classical music in this town. Um, there's a reason why, you know, and even an institution like my alma mater, the Curtis Institute of Music can, you know, build a 60 or $70 million facility and why facilities, if it's like Clef Club, um, you know, can struggle or have some of our historic jazz venues, if it's Zanzibar, Ort Leaves, you know, some of the others that we have seen disappear over time, uh, where that in a way is, I, I guess it's okay. Um, so, I mean, there are certainly really, really big challenges for both communities and for the classical community. I mean, there has been a huge stain on it for a very, very long time. Um, and I think it's going to be up to our current leaders uh, perhaps to, even take this moment to re-examine themselves uh, because I think it's really hard to say that you know you stand in solidarity with the black community um, when that is not a regular part of many of these organizations DNA right. um, and not I, I don't want to discredit what they have done over the years but uh, I I think it is more than safe to say that it has not been part of their DNA. Um, how boards are built and staffs, um, programming, resources, um, you know, uh, outreach, um, inclusion um, of different voices, even those that uh, challenge who they are. Right. Uh, so. So. What's the opportunity here, do you think, right now to change things? I think first it, it starts with listening and taking the opportunity now uh, that from what I am hearing uh, from protests and from the black community is that we need people to listen. Um, I think the second opportunity is to be bold. 
Um, and, you know, I believe that boldness can be rewarded in ways that help organizations become stronger and more relevant, more inclusive, but also more, more sustainable. Um, perhaps I'm biased and my work over the past decade will play on Philly. Certainly the scariest thing that I've ever done and the scariest thing that I continue to do. Um, uh, but we've been very blessed to have people that have um, helped us take a very, very bold stand in how we help um, really solve a, a big inequity in our education system in, in Philly that is still rooted in the same challenges our society faces. Um, and then I think the last opportunity is really leadership. Um, I think classical music organizations um, can lead in a time like this. Um, I think the music can lead and it, uh, it certainly can lead if the music includes us. Um, and this is just, it's okay to do less of what these organizations are currently doing so that so much more can be done to include the voices of, of black musicians in this town, uh, black composers, um, conductors, soloists, um, guest speakers, staff members, board members, um, you know, communities, uh, the, the list goes on, so. Right. Is there any particular music that you would recommend? Oh, um, I would say recently I have, uh, I mean, even, I, I've recently reconnected with Florence Price. And it's interesting to come back to her music during a time like this. And it just, it means something a little different. Um, you, you know, I mean, what I've learned and, and researched on her over the years and some of the struggles. Uh, so I certainly would, would start there. I guess that's what's been on my playlist. That's great. Thanks a lot, Stan, for, for sharing these thoughts. Well, sure. Well, thank you for asking the questions. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else? Well, um, I really believe in the classical community in Philly. I really believe that it can uh, do this. And I, I have seen it every day for the past 10 years. And um, our kids eat up the music. Uh, they performed all over the city. Uh, we've done really great projects with Curtis and the orchestra and the Mann Center and uh, the barns and the art museum, the list goes on and on. Um, and, and our communities, our parents, you know, the really, really connect with this stuff. Um, and mainly it's because they, they see their kids do it. They see the joy that it brings. Um, they see them go from Twinkle Twinkle to, you know, a Brahms symphony. Um, they've been able to celebrate some of our kids who have gone on to major music schools um, across the country and even as far as the Royal College in London. And they've seen the kids on the st stage of TED and, uh, you know, represent their communities and their neighborhoods um, with classical music. Uh, so anyway, I'm convinced that it can uh, be powerful and I would go as far as saying that I think that um, classical music specifically uh, can really help um, our entire community, including uh, the black community in Philadelphia, really make it through times like this. Um, Why do you say that? Classical music especially. Because I think when presented genuinely and with an open heart, then I think that these are things that really can um, connect with the communities that we serve. And again, I, I get to see that every single day when we work with our students. I just wish that more would join in in sharing that, uh, sharing the music and sharing that love uh, with people. And this is a time where we need it. 
Um, so I would just say after everyone has made their statement, just where's the music? Um, let, let's do more than write a statement. Great, I, absolutely. Thanks so much, Stan Thompson. Sure, thank you.